Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and I thought I would give a one-week update as to things I've been doing with the My Fitness Pal app, as well as a minor update change to the channel in a slight way, but we'll get back to that. Let's talk about the My Fitness Pal. My last video, I introduced that I was just about to start using it. I think I'd used it one day, and I tried to show some things about it and talk about it and whatever. So I have now gone eight days using it. And let me tell you, it's not always the easiest thing in the world. It's, it's just not. Not that it's not easy enough to use, but sometimes trying to figure out what foods to put in and how to put them in can be difficult. I think I mentioned uh, that last Wednesday I went to the Japanese restaurant and because it's not a chain restaurant I had to pretty much estimate how much I thought all the different foods were. Well tonight I had kinda had to do that because um, I ended up having to walk a pretty good distance <laughs> to get back to the hotel. Yeah I'm in the hotel this is not my background um, and you know over an hour walk almost three miles and you know, I've had back problems, so I, you know, but I made it. I got all the way back here, and I just decided I, did, I had earned myself a piece of cake. I haven't had a piece of cake since the wedding, uh, which was this past Saturday, and I didn't really eat much of the cake because it was whipped cream frosting, and ah, ugh, okay, that's just my own little personal thing. So anyway, I get this cake at a place called Fresh Market, and I get back here, and I try to look it up, and Fresh Market is listed in the My Fitness Pal thing, but not any of the cakes. There's a cupcake that was listed, but it's not quite the same thing. Still, you know, what I was able to do is figure out just on my own, I was kind of guessing what some of the nutritional values are. I don't know how accurate it is. I don't know if I'm really close or not. I'm going to assume I'm close, but it's, sometimes it's stuff like that that you're just not really sure uh, what you're what you're getting. And one of the other issues I've had, of course, is that I think I mentioned I have a potassium issue where my potassium is too high. It turns out that not all the restaurants, not all the fast food places list potassium. It's not one of the things that they have to list. So, for instance, I know that today I had a Wendy's hamburger. And the hamburgers have gotten smaller at Wendy's. What's up with that? Anyway, I know that the bread has some kind of potassium in it. Bread has potassium in it. But I have no idea how much because Wendy's doesn't list it. Burger King doesn't list it. McDonald's lists it, but the other two don't. So I don't really know how to, you know, measure that type of thing. I could try to guess, but I haven't figured out if you can override any of the numbers that you're given from these restaurants. So I'm not worried about it. The funny thing is that out of the eight days, I've only been over the calories twice. Once was the very first day, and once I think was Monday maybe? Monday was a travel day, and travel days, I'm either going to way under eat or way over eat. That's just how it is. It's, you know, sometimes it's like grabbing food <laughs> whenever you can eat it, because uh, that's how it is when you're flying a lot of distances. So... Have I lost anything? Well, I may have lost a pound. I know that when I weighed myself Saturday morning before I got dressed to go to this wedding, it said I had lost a pound. But, you know, you're never really sure how these things work out. Um, but yesterday I was under the calories I was allowed to have by 600. And it doesn't like when you're that far under. But I'm thinking, wait, I was way over in fat. I was way over in sugar. I don't... I don't know. I've never counted calories before, and I'm letting this thing do it so that I don't have to do it on my own. I don't know how this is going to work, especially I'm trying to figure out how do I go over in fat and still lose weight. I'm not sure. Maybe it's some of the exercise that I've been doing. Yeah, I've actually done some exercise. So what are you going to do? So that's the thing. I'm kind of sticking with it for now. I'm going to give it a good shot. I'm going to give it a good three to four weeks to see if I actually lose any weight. It definitely has made me more conscious about looking at the foods that I'm eating and you get amazed when you look at some of the numbers and you realize where you're supposed to be. I've gone over on the sodium seven out of the eight days. <laughs> I'm, like I said before, I'm so glad I don't have a high blood pressure issue because I'd be in trouble.
So it's really making me think about my foods. And I think that's a good thing. Now, I've talked about that so that now I can talk about a slight change. You know, I've been looking at a bunch of YouTube videos. I love watching YouTube videos. I have some people who I love. I'm following, I think, or subscribed to something like 42, 43 different channels. And one of the things I've noticed is that there's nobody who's talking about, well, 50s, people who are in their 50s. Um, and I started to think about that because I said, you know what, we actually have kind of an interesting perspective. There's things that we go through that people in their 20s and 30s may never think of. There's things that we can impart to you because we've been there. Things that you may not have ever thought of. Heck, we, may, we could be talking to other people in the 50s who may not have thought about this stuff, 40s, 30s. And I said, you know what, that would be kind of a niche for me talking about things uh, from a 50s perspective. For instance, I'm just going to throw this out there really quick, and I'm, I'm going to explore this deeper at another time. But one of the things we can talk about is that when you're in your 50s, you start thinking about what's going to happen when you get to retirement age. Are you going to have enough money put away to retire? Do you have any money whatsoever? Can you live on Social Security? For me, I work for myself. You know what? I don't pay Social Security. So any Social Security money I'm going to get is going to come from when I was working. I don't think that's going to be enough. So <laughs> this is one of the things I have to think about is putting some money away. But if you're in your 20s, early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, you could start something now and be well off. You can. If you don't believe me, and I'm not saying anything really big. Don't believe me, go look out on YouTube for a video Warren Buffett did, uh, did talking about how if you had invested like this little bit of money early on in one particular company, you'd have been a millionaire by the time I think you were 65 or maybe 55 or something like that. You know, it's out there. Anyway, what this will get me is a few more videos. That may kind of turn out kind of vloggish. There's people who are doing these personal vlogs and whatever. And like I said, I think it's a perspective that I can offer because, you know, I'm there. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to go to other direction. I keep hoping I will. Uh, actually, I keep hoping that my mind develops like this episode of Outer Limits one time where the guy's mind developed to such an extent that he was able to uh, basically lose his physical body. He just became this entity that was going to be immortal. He was never going to die. That's why I used to read a whole bunch of books and study dictionary because I was trying to get my mind to that point. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> but we had to try, right? So anyway, we're going to see what happens. So I'm Mitch Mitchell, and I hope y'all are watching the videos. If you're not, eh, it happens. But if you do, like the video. Please like the video. Think about subscribing to the channel. There's some pretty good stuff on this channel, if I say so myself. And I'm pretty much the only one who's going to say it. Y'all take care. Have a good night.